I want to talk to you this morning about a subject that just the word itself is not a pretty topic. It, it doesn't sound like it's a, a fun topic. Uh, and that word is slavery. Uh, nobody in our society, unless you were just some sick, twisted pervert, which, by the way, slavery is greater today than it's ever been in, in human history. Um, and, but nobody uh, would, would it, you know, hopefully in our circles, would ever think slavery is a good thing, right? We, we've hopefully done away with that notion. Slavery is not a good thing. Um, and certainly you wouldn't want to be called a slave, at least I would think. But that is exactly how the Apostle Paul uh, who wrote a vast majority of the New Testament, referred to himself. As a matter of fact, writing Romans, uh, we'll look at it later on, but Romans 1.1, 1, 1, he starts it off, I am, this is Paul, a slave of Jesus Christ. He uses the word slave. Um, and if you think about the magnitude of that statement, um, and, and you got to stop for a moment and think about who the Apostle Paul was. All right? Um, besides, like I said, writing more than half of the New Testament, he was also one of the greatest missionary planners uh, in, in church history, going around planting churches everywhere. Um, he was arguably, some would say, the most influential man born after Jesus. Um, yet, how did Paul refer to himself? As a slave. He said, I'm a slave. Now, but Paul, let me tell you this, he, he called himself a slave first and an apostle second. I think that's interesting. Um, now, Paul, though, was in good company. Um, he wasn't the only one who called himself a slave, all right? Timothy also referred to himself as a slave. James, who was the lead pastor of the first church in Jerusalem, um, he was the half-brother of Jesus. He referred to himself as a slave, all right? Um, you guys remember a guy named Peter in the Bible? Yeah, Simon Peter, who pretty much preached the first sermon in the first church service, and 3,000 people came to salvation. He's one of the pillars of the, of the church, you know. Um, and God used him to, to, to make the church what it is today. He referred to himself as a slave and apostle of Jesus Christ. Jude, who, by the way, was the biological son of, of Mary and Joseph. He was a half-brother also to, to Jesus and a, and a full brother to, to James. He referred to himself as a slave, all right? And, and then finally, one other guy we're going to make sure to get in there is, is John. We talked about John a few weeks ago, the disciple whom Jesus loved. you remember that? Maybe you did. Maybe you, you just you dozed off. I don't know. But John was one of the three closest friends of Jesus, all right? And, I mean, he was the guy, he was invited to the transfiguration, things like that. I mean, this guy was on the inside, right? John was there. But it's interesting, he writes five books in the New Testament, or letters. And, um, and, and uh, his gospel and the three epistles, he refused to reveal himself at all. It's not till we get to the end of, uh, or in the book of Revelation, where John says, oh, I am a slave to Jesus Christ, all right? So, here's why I say that. If all of these great I hesitate the word. Let's just use a Bible heroes. If they are willing to call themselves slaves, do you think maybe that's something we ought to look at? Okay, maybe there's something to this. Maybe there's something more to this idea of slavery because it's definitely, we know throughout human history, slavery has been a bad thing. And there is no way that we can condone can, uh, that kind of behavior. But there's something different here that which the writers of the New Testament are talking about when it comes to slavery, all right? Um, so let, let's, let's come back to that. So let, let me give you, just briefly, before we go any further, uh, uh, let's, uh, let's look into some, have a little Greek study here, all right? Because, you know, the New Testament was written in Greek. So it helps, uh, in our English translations, we lose a lot. And so it helps to understand what word was used when they write, uh, you know, when they wrote the New Testament. So if you do a very quick study, the word for, and I should have put it on the screen, I don't, I don't know why I didn't, but it's doulos, Doulos is the Greek word that Paul uses and these other authors use, D-O-U-L-O-S. And, and there's a theologian by the name of Kenneth, Kenneth West, and he, this is how he described doulos. And it's dead on. This is exactly when Paul wrote this word doulos, right? This is, this is what he meant. This is the definition that Kenneth West gave. And the most, uh, he says, it is the most abject surveil, which just means lowest form, um, term used by the Greeks to denote a slave. He was one who was bound to his master in cords so strong that only death could break them. One who served his master to the disregard of his own interest and whose will, his own will, was swallowed up in the will of his master. All 